Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Welcome, everyone. I am Plaid creator Bianca. I am so excited to be here with you guys today for the Mandala Art for Beginners. Um, we will go ahead and we will jump right into our project. If you have any questions as we go along, drop them in the chat. Let me know where you guys are from and let me know what paint projects you are working on. And I'll go ahead and tell you all of the supplies that you'll need. So for this project, you will need a canvas. We're using a 10 by 10 white canvas here. You'll also need the pattern that you can find online if you wanna follow the pattern that we'll be doing here. You'll also need some transfer paper, a pencil, and some tape. And of course we have our paint over here to the left of me, to the right of me, I'm sorry. And as we go along, I'll kind of pull them out and let you know the names of them so that you guys can know what colors you would like to pick out when you go to the store. And then we also have a black chalk paint over here that we're gonna use to cover our canvas with before we actually start with the design. So those are the supplies that you'll need. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And we will go ahead and jump into the instructions for this project. So the first thing that you will need to do is grab a canvas. Like I said, we are using a 10 by 10 canvas here. And you're gonna wanna paint this black. And like I showed you guys just a second ago, I used the home decor chalk rich black paint. So you'll go ahead and paint your canvas. Once that is fully dry, and I do mean fully, fully dry, then you can move on to the next step. I would give this a few hours before you move on to that next step because we'll actually be kind of drawing on this and we wanna make sure that, that paint is really dry because we don't wanna mess it up or scratch it. So again, I use the rich black home decor chalk paint. All right, so I'll go ahead and set this canvas out of the way. Yes, if you have a black canvas, you can definitely use that if you already have it. If you do not, you can paint a canvas black. And yes, somebody else had a follow-up question. If we don't have chalk paint, can you use regular black paint? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, and we All also right. have a question about doing this without the pattern. You certainly can. The pattern just yeah. makes it um, a little more easy. There's no real designing that you have to do on your part. Um, yeah. You know, we love to see the creativity. If you guys don't have a pattern, uh, use your best judgment, come up with whatever you can. It'll look great. And we still want to see it. Yeah. Definitely. So yep, just like Stephen said, you can get as creative as you would like with your pattern. This is just the one that we'll be doing here together. And again, if this is the design that you would like to follow, this should be online. You can download it and cut it out. I'll show you how to do that right now. So your canvas, once it's fully dried, should look something like this. This already has a design on it, but I'm just showing you guys how the black paint should look once it dries. All right, so then the next step is, if you're gonna use the design that we provided online, will be to cut it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. It comes in half, and I'll show you how you can put that together. So we're just gonna cut along the dotted lines here, and the provided pattern is for a 10 by 10 canvas. Of course, you can use any size canvas you would like, but this will only be but so big if you do decide to go with a larger canvas. So again, this is designed for a 10 by 10 canvas. Bianca, we did have a question. What is the benefit of using chalk paint specifically? I would say that the benefit of using chalk paint, and I can show you a little bit better, more than I can explain in just a second, but when we transfer our design onto our canvas, the, the transfer will actually show up a little bit better because it's almost like a, top, a chalk texture going on top of the chalk paint. Um, and again, if you give me just a second, I can explain that just a little bit better in just a minute here. We're actually gonna get to that step as soon as we finish this part. 
But when you do transfer your design in the way that we're going to do it here, I think it does show up just a little bit better. But again, if you don't have chalk paint, you're still able to do this project if you're gonna use transfer paper to transfer your design. All right. So we have cut out our pattern. And again, like I said, it comes in two halves. And if you put it together like this, it creates one design. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and tape it on the back. So let's put that together like this. And then we're just gonna grab some painter's tape. And you can use regular tape if that's what you have. And we are just going to tape this together. You wanna get it as lined up as possible. So let's get that straight again. All righty. Lay the tape down. It's wiggling. There we go. All right. So I'm going to flip this over. And now our pattern is ready to go. And so, again, if you are using the provided pattern that we gave online, you will need to transfer this. And how you would do this is with transfer paper. So how you do this is you want to take your design and you want to lay it on top of your transfer paper. And what's very important with transfer paper is to make sure that you are placing your pattern on the right side of it. So some transfer papers come with a little bitty line that says this side up. But if it doesn't, I'll show you how you can tell whether or not you have your paper on the right side. So once you have laid your design on top of your transfer paper, you then want to bring your canvas over and you want to test a little piece of it. So we just want to make sure that we have our transfer paper right side up. And if you draw or trace around one of your dots and just kind of lift your paper up, let me make a bigger line so you guys can see that a little bit better. And if I need to hold it up, just let me know. So let's kind of actually do a dot here. So can you guys see that right there? But that is how you know that you are drawing on top of the right side of the transfer paper. And I'll do it the wrong way, just so you can also see what that will look like. It's actually not gonna look like anything, not much like anything, but just to show you. So see how that didn't transfer this time? So that's very important because you would be highly disappointed if you took your time to trace out your entire pattern and then you lift it up and you don't see anything. So before you transfer, just test and make sure that you are tracing and drawing on the right side of the transfer paper. So let's put that back over on the right side. And so what you would do is place your pattern and your transfer paper directly in the middle of your canvas. And you can even take this down in place so that as you go along and trace out all of your dots that it doesn't move. You wanna make sure that your pattern is nice and neat and not all over the place. So you can grab some more tape or painter's tape and just kind of tape your transfer paper down as well as your pattern. And what I did, instead of tracing around the circles, I went ahead and filled them in when you're done, it makes it a little bit more easy to see where you need to place your paint dots versus just doing the outline. So I would suggest fully circling in each dot. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over. I will show you the paper that I actually completed after I finished transferring it. So you guys can kind of see how I filled in all of my bubbles here. So that is my suggestion. If you feel like it's a little bit easier for you to just outline the circles, that works just as well. Again, it's totally up to you. So now that you have your design transferred onto your canvas, you can go ahead and begin painting. And this is the fun part. 
So we'll actually, we'll paint over that at the end here. So before we get started, I will show you our finished example, just so you can see where we are headed. So this, this is the color palette that we will be using. And I'll bring that up just a little bit closer so you guys can see it. As I go through, I will call out all of the colors that we will be using. And if you guys have any color requests, and if you would like to see me go in a specific way, just let me know. And we will go ahead and get started, guys. So some of our colors are breezy blue. We have hushed violet. We also have this really pretty pink, which is pink nectar. We have another purple color. This is pleasant purple. Yes, the transfer paper is reusable. We also have brilliant blue. This is a really pretty color. We have Mesa sunrise. We have silky peacock. And then our last two colors are Whisper White and Shibori. All right. So if you guys would like to see any of those colors, let me know. I will use them. Yep. I certainly can. So I'll leave that here as we go along so that you guys can reference it. And we will go ahead and we will get started with our first color, which I am going to pick out. And I think I wanna start with the Hushed Violet. So I am going to work my way from the outside in. That's the way my brain works. Um, <laughs> I feel like the design is a little bit easier for me when I start from the outside versus working my way out. So, but you guys might find it a little bit easier to work your way from the inside out. So I'm going to start at the border. So let's go ahead and do our first dot here. Uh oh. So, <laughs> very important with using folk art dots. You do not want to squeeze too hard because that will happen. So let's just wipe that up just a little bit. So you do want, you want to make sure that you are lightly squeezing. It does not take a lot of paint at all, just a very light squeeze. And as a matter of fact, let me show you an example before we get started. So very light squeezes, very light. And if you wanna test it out like I'm doing before you get started, I think that that would be a very smart idea, just so you can kind of get the hang of the amount of pressure that you need to use for the bottle. It does not take a big squeeze. Like I'm barely squeezing this right now, guys. I'm really just tapping it, honestly, because the excess paint that was left over from the first squeeze is still there. So I'm really just kind of tapping it. So once your paint runs out, I would say grab a paper towel like I'm doing right now, Squeeze a little bit out, and then whatever is left over is what you should use for your dots. All right. So, so Bianca, while you're, while you're doing that, I wanted okay. to um, uh, address this question that we got okay. that I'm actually going to talk about. And then I saw that question okay. pop up, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Um, it says, are these paints specifically formulated for creating dots, or are they special because they're equipped with a tip? This paint uh, is self-leveling, is kind of what we call it. Mm. Um, so we have um uh created a formula that when it dries and we can show it at the end it it keeps its dome effect but it sort of levels out still while it dries it's kind of easier to explain when you see it um rather than uh talking about it but yes it is a uh, uh specifically formulated for creating dots that sort of dome and dry like that okay thank you stevie yeah all right, so as you can notice, as I am placing my paint down, instead of continuing to squeeze, I'm just swirling around the existing paint that is already there to kind of fill in those bubbles and circles. 
I'm not really squeezing too much paint out. As I swirl around, I'm just moving around the paint that is already on the canvas. And we are just going to continue to go around and fill up our border here. Alrighty. All right. And I think I'll come over here to this other side and we'll start here. If you guys have any color requests, let me know. I definitely do not mind going in the order that you guys would like for me to so that you can see some of the colors that we have here. And the good thing about this craft is it's really easy. You don't have to be a painter. Um, you really don't have to have ever painted before. This isn't something that requires like skill or technique. You're literally just filling in the bubbles. And that's really it. So we'll flip this around. Yep, if you give me just a second, I'll kind of hold this up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Let me finish this side real quick and I'll hold it up for you in just a second. Right. And another tip that I would give, when you're done with your circle, you wanna make sure you pull your bottle tip straight up instead of out, because what you don't wanna do is accidentally drag your paint this way and then you create a line that's connecting the dots. So when you're done filling in your circle, you wanna pull up. And I always like to say that it kind of looks like a Hershey's kiss. Alrighty. So we're just gonna continue to go around. So I'm gonna answer a couple of questions too while you're okay. working, Bianca. Um, okay. What is the name of this paint? This is Folk Art Dots. This is uh, our one of our new products for 2022. Um, mm -hmm. And is it easier to lie the canvas flat or use it on an easel? I would definitely lie it flat. Yeah. Um, sure. It's not gonna run if you were having it on an easel, but it uh, is probably just easier to work with. Yeah. Um, while it's flat. I definitely agree. And I think it's just easier to look at while it's flat. And then how do you fix it if you did connect the dots on accident? What I would suggest is having um, some Q-tips near. I think that's a really easy way to kind of go into some small areas and clean it up just a little bit. And also maybe even a toothpick. So I think having those two things nearby when you do this project is really helpful. And if that does not work, which it should work, when you finish your project, if you have like a tiny paintbrush, you can kind of go in and touch it up with the black paint in the areas that you weren't able to fix. And right now, I know you guys may see some of like the, the outline from the transfer paper, but when this project is totally done drying, all you have to do is take a damp cloth. You can even use a baby wipe and kind of go over this, but you don't want to do that until your painting is completely dry. You might even want to let that sit overnight. So I'm going to continue to go around with our hushed violet here. Then we'll move on to the next color. All right, so we have our corners filled in. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to another color and I'll call these out again, just so you guys can tell me what you wanna see. So we have the Mesa Sunrise, we have the Breezy Blue, we have Whisper White, and then let's see, we also have a Brilliant Blue. So 
So again, if you didn't catch what I said earlier, what I would suggest before you go in with whatever color you use, I would squeeze your initial dot out on a paper towel. Okay, you guys wanna see brilliant blue? Okay. So I would squeeze that initial, that initial dot onto a paper towel. And then whatever excess paint is left over, then you use to create your dots with. So I will swap this out for the brilliant blue, which is this one right here. And then uh, we have another question. How do you keep from smudging when you start from the outside in? Um, if you do accidentally smudge it, you can take a small paper towel that's like got like just a little bit of moisture to it or even like a Q-tip um, yeah. and just clean it up that way with a toothpick. And then if it's also, if it just becomes uh, a persistent pro or consistent problem, you could uh, just reverse it and start working from the inside out. Uh, there's real no right yeah. or wrong way to work with it. Yeah, there's no right or wrong way to complete your pattern. Um, if you didn't catch what I said earlier, I just prefer to start from the outside. I feel like it's easier for me to follow the, the, the design as I work my way in versus going from the inside out. But you might find it easier to work the opposite way, but there is no right or wrong way. And either way, whether you start from the inside or the outside, um, you still do have to kind of be careful no matter which way you go. So this is the Brilliant Blue, which is really pretty. It's like a really rich and royal blue color. And again, I am not really squeezing. I'm just kind of using the excess paint left over that is on the tip. But if I do have to squeeze, I am barely, barely squeezing this. So that is the secret to this project. You wanna have a light hand and a quick hand. And for the smaller dots, you really don't have to swirl around. So with my bigger dots, I was having to um, like spread the paint out a little bit more. But with the smaller dots, the point on this bottle is basically the size of some of these dots. So once I tap it, that's really it. I'm not having to spread it out, but I'm sure once I get back to my bigger circles, I will have to go back to what I was doing a second ago and spread that paint out. And I'll hold this up in just a second so that you guys can see the paint a little bit better. So let's actually flip that back that way. And hopefully you guys can kind of see it, what I mean by it should look like a Hershey's kiss. So when I place my dot down, I'm pulling up. I'm not pulling out. We don't want any lines or strips of paint to get all over our canvas here. So I'm pulling straight up when I finish. And if you choose to create your own pattern, there's literally nothing different that you know you need to do different. Um, you'll still be using the same techniques that I'm showing you here. You'll just be following your own design, your own pattern. All right. So I'm just going around here. Super easy, guys. You do not have to be an expert painter. So we uh, had a question about how many paints uh, come in the set, and it is six pieces in a set. Uh, the Folk Art Acrylic Paint Set, uh, available at Michael's. And then how many colors of dot paint are available to buy individually? I want to say it is um, 20, maybe a little more than 20. I can count okay. real quick and uh, and uh, give you an actual answer. And then uh, somebody actually just did a great job of answering another question for me. Um, how do we, it, it, it's, it's, they said it's a dumb question, but it's not a dumb question. Um, how do you get the, the plastic off of the paint? You can twist it. Uh, it's a pro tip. We do it all the time in the studio. Twist the plastic like you're uh, unscrewing like a plastic bottle and it should just slide right off. So thank you uh, to whoever answered that. 
And yes, it is 20 colors. 20 colors. If you guys can think of any fun projects that you could use this paint for, let us know. Always love to hear everyone's suggestions. You guys come up with really cool and creative projects. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up so that you guys can kind of see. Ooh, rocks, bottles, rocks and bottles. That would be really cool. Okay, so you guys can kind of see it here. And if you didn't catch what I said just a few minutes ago, you can still kind of see that chalky outline, but that is okay because at the end of this project, once it is fully dried, you just go over this with a damp cloth and that will get rid of all of the, um, the chalky or the leftover lines that you see from the transfer that we did at the beginning of this project. All right, so I'm gonna move on to a different color. We have pink nectar. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go we, with this We actually one. had a request for uh, Mason. Okay. okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So let's squeeze a little bit of it out here first. Yeah, this is really, really pretty. I really love this color. All right. And there was another question, do the bottles come in different sizes? Um, not yet. Um, these are the only sizes that this bottle comes in. And can it be used outside? Um, if you do like a rock or something and you put folk art dots on it, if you are gonna put it outside, I would suggest maybe putting a layer, after it dries, put a layer of outdoor Mod Podge on it. And that way it would really seal it. But this is mostly for decorative use. Uh, but if you do the outdoor Mod Podge, you should be golden after that. Yeah. So I saw somebody say that um, rocks would be a cool project to do with this paint. I totally agree. And if you do decide to do that, definitely what Steven just suggested, I would definitely cover it with the Mod Podge just to kind of seal it so that your project lasts as long as possible and so that it's protected. This color is really, really pretty. So you can kind of see the design coming together here. So I'm just going around and following the dots that we transferred onto the canvas. Right. Use a little bit more out. I ran out of some, some paint, so I'm just squeezing a little bit more out. And then whatever is left over on the tip, that's what we're going to use to fill in our dots. I'm just going around. This is super easy, guys. Super, super easy. All you're doing is literally tapping the bottle onto the canvas, and that's it. I know that at the end of this project, it looks like super detailed and it might even look like, oh, I can't do this. You definitely can. You definitely can. This is super easy. All right. So we are just going around here. This is a very mindless project. I love projects like these. They don't require a lot of thinking. And I love a project where I can like watch my favorite show <laughs> and just kind of breeze through it. This is one of those projects where you can definitely turn on a movie or a show or even a podcast and just kind of zone out. You can definitely do this in different sizes as well. You can do a larger canvas. You can even do like a smaller one. I think if you wanted to do like a smaller project, coasters would be really cool. You just have to make sure you seal them properly. All right. And then once you kind of get the hang of how to use the bottle properly, you kind of 
you kind of start to go a little bit faster. Let's get some of that excess paint out of here. All right. There we go. If anyone has ever done anything like this before, let us know. And let us know what you made and how it turned out. Now I'm kind of getting to the tail end of using this color. So if there's another one that you guys wanted to see, we can switch out to that one. I think right before I pulled the Nessa Sunrise out, I was getting ready to use the pink nectar. But another color that we have not used yet is also the breezy blue. So if anyone wants to see those two colors, let us know. And then we also have this dark purple here, which is a pleasant purple. And then we have whisper white, which is just our white color. Okay. And then this color here, shivery. All right. So I'm going to finish up with our messy sunrise. Let's actually squeeze a little bit of it out before we go back in with it. All right, there we go. The dark blue. Okay, we can do the dark blue. I think we did brilliant blue already. So the other dark blue we have is the silky peacock. And then I believe there's another one that I just pulled out as well. I'll pull them back out again. All right. So see, once you kind of get the hang of it, it starts to become really quick. But you don't want to do, you don't want to go too quick. You do want to be careful. And again, I'm going to keep saying it. When you switch off to the next dot, do not pull your bottle off to the side. Make sure you're going up, down, up, down. That is one of the keys to this project as well. So not too much pressure when you squeeze the bottle. And you also don't want to drag your bottle to the side as you switch off between your points and your circles. All righty. So let's actually hit this one here and this one. All right, so that is our Mesa Sunrise color. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our Silky Peacock and our Pink Nectar. We just did a bright color, so I'll follow it up with the Silky Peacock, which is a little bit darker. All right, and I'm just adding a little bit onto the paper towel over here before we actually switch over to the canvas. You don't wanna start with too much paint in your tip because you don't wanna flood out your canvas. All right, so we are switching back out to some larger dots here. So instead of just going up and down, like what I did with the smaller dots here, we're gonna swirl our paint around to fill in those bigger bubbles. And for the bigger ones, if you do have to squeeze a little bit more paint out, and if there's not enough on your tip, just be very careful. You don't wanna do too much. Um, so we have a question from Mel. Any tips for cleaning out uh, the tips between use? Yeah, if you take the cap off and then run it through some warm soapy water, that should clean it right up. So I think after this color, I'm gonna go with the pink nectar. 
so that we can see how that one looks. So we'll flip this around. And then just so you guys can get another close up of the finished product, I'll go ahead and show you guys that again. So you can kind of see where we are headed here. It's right here, but I'll hold it up closer to the camera so that you can get a better look at it. Just a second here. So even though I am having to swirl my bottle tip around with the bigger dots here, I'm still pulling up when I finish. To me, it kind of looks like a Hershey's kiss. That's the best way for me to describe it. <laughs> All right. So we kind of went through that border a little bit more quickly than we, than we did with our others. And if you didn't catch what Steven said earlier, this paint is designed to basically lay flat. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that or tell, but it kind of evens itself out. And when it dries, you can kind of see like the middle point where it kind of like spread itself out. I'll hold that up so you guys can actually kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, I saw someone else suggest pink nectar. So that will definitely be our next color. All right, so that is our silky peacock. I will hold this up so you guys can kind of see that a little bit better. And then I will also hold up our finished example here. So when we're done and this is dried and you're able to wipe it off and get all of those chalky lines off, this is what the finished product should look like. This is the pre-designed pattern that is uploaded online, but you guys can definitely get creative and come up with your own. I saw someone say, can you hold it up at an angle? Yeah, so can you hold it like sideways and then like really close to the camera? And I think I think oh, they're yes. trying to see like the yeah. dots, like yeah, like completely on its side. Yeah. And you can see like there's just a little bit of a raised um, texture yeah. there. And if you rub your hands over it, you'll definitely feel the dots. Yeah. Like, yep, for sure, for sure. Um, it's very raised. We, right, we also had a question. Um, let me go back up and find it. Can you go back and fix a dot that did not get filled completely uh, yes. the first time and if, it, if it has dried already? Okay, I definitely can. You guys have to help me find it. So what I will say about this, it is very easy to kind of skip over some of the bubbles because there are just so many. So you might get to the end of your project and notice, oh, I didn't fill in that one. Um, it's definitely easy because it's such a busy pattern. To kind of skip over some yeah if it's mm -hmm. if it's dried already um i think what you could do is just cover it anyway and it will uh more or less hold the same shape that you had in your pattern um so yep. i wouldn't worry too much about it oh is it dry is it halfway dry i think the best thing to do would still be to fix it while it's uh still drying like while it's still wet um but yeah don't worry too much okay. And how many right. colors have you used so far? Is it four? Let's see. I have used one, two, three, four colors so far. So this pink nectar will be our fifth color. Cool. All right. And again, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I squeezed just a little bit out onto our paper towel over here. And let's do, let's do these bigger bubbles here. We're gonna try to work our way inward. 
So this is probably the biggest bubble or dot that we've done so far. So I am having to squeeze a little bit more paint than usual out. That's totally fine. Again, you don't wanna to apply too much pressure. So I am squeezing, but I am barely, barely squeezing. And then I'm swirling the paint around to fill in that bubble. Let's go ahead and we'll actually, so we'll go around and do all of those, but then we'll also fill in the big bubbles in between our blue stars right here. So let's finish these first. And then we'll come back out and fill in the bubbles that are in the middle of our, I believe that was the, what color was that? The brilliant blue. So we'll fill in the dots that are in the middle of the brilliant blue stars. Alrighty. We'll flip this around here. That pink is really nice and bright. Definitely adds a pop of color. All right. So let's just kind of even that circle up a little bit. There we go. All right. We'll flip this around. We'll come over to our other set of larger circles right here. And then Christine had a question. In the original, um, the outer dots, is there a dot in every other light, like a darker dot in every other light colored? Or can you create dots with holes in the middle? Yeah, well, so what you're seeing is somebody is, um, I can't remember who made that original one, but the, um, the once it's dried, they've gone back with a darker color and put a dot on top of that. So uh, not a, yeah, it yeah. doesn't have a hole in the middle. It's just two layers of paint. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So when your painting dries, if you do kind of want to do something like that, and I'll hold it up just so you guys can kind of see it. So once your first color has dried, you can definitely go back over, like what Steven just said here, and add another color on top. You definitely do not have to leave like an open circle or anything. You just go directly on top of that color with your next one once the original color has dried. And I'll hold that up just a little bit more so you guys can see that. They even did it like right here, which is really, really cool. All right, so we will continue to work on our bigger bubbles here. And we will try to use a color that we have not used so far. I think the next color will be the Whisper White. All right. We will go ahead and fill in the bubbles in between our brilliant blue stars. Alrighty. Again, I am swirling the paint around, just kind of filling that bubble. So I make my initial squeeze in the middle of the bigger bubble, and then I just take my tip and I swirl the paint around to fill it in. So it is definitely coming to life here. I think these dots right around here kind of did it. So we will hit these last three and then we will move on to another color. For now, we'll probably revisit a few of these colors as we work our way in all right okay 
So I think I am going to go ahead and use our Whisper White next. All righty. And we will start with our next design here. So I think I'm going to go around these loops here. And there are some there are some spaces that I haven't filled in yet, like right around our corners, but I'm kind of waiting until the end. I want to see what colors we don't use on the inside, and then I'll come back in and use those out here. All right, so let's, let's start here. So we have gone back to our smaller dots. So I am barely, barely squeezing this, barely squeezing this. And because these dots are smaller, I'm not having to swirl around kind of like what we did with the bigger dots just a second ago. Super easy. Super easy and super quick once you kind of get the hang of it. Ah, so we made our first line here. You guys can kind of see it right there. I'll go back and fix that in just a second. So again, to prevent that from happening, you do want to pull up and not out. All right. We'll continue to go back around. I'm gonna grab a paintbrush here and I'll fix that line that we created. All right, so let's actually stop here for just a second. I'm gonna grab a paintbrush here. Let's grab a, a smaller one. Just a second. All right. And let's just kind of clean that up just a little bit. Let's also try to clean up this other one right here. And again, like I said, whatever you are not able to clean up, once your painting is dry, you can kind of go back in with your black paint and touch up your bubble. Okay. So I rounded it out just a little bit more. We can touch up that smudge once this finish finishes drying. So, okay, I'm gonna grab our Whisper White again. We're gonna to continue to go around. So down, up, up, down, down, up. And I think the next color, another color that we have not used just yet is our darker purple. Let's see what the name of that one is. So our darker purple is the pleasant purple. So we'll go in with this one next. All righty. Okay. So we are closing in this circle. All righty. So that is our Whisper White. I'm probably going to use this a few more times, but I do want to try to get through all of our colors here. So I'm going to set this one off to the side, and then we are going to use our Pleasant Purple. 
Again, I'm squeezing just a little bit of it out onto the napkin before we get started. And we are going to start on the other star designs that are towards the inner circle here. Lightly tapping. These are some more small dots. So I'm not squeezing, I'm just tapping the excess paint off of the tip here. Alrighty, so we'll flip this around. And if you guys are going to use your own canvas at home, um, you definitely do not have to stick to just a canvas. You can use wood. Um, someone earlier suggested rocks. You can definitely use this paint on rocks. And I actually have an example of a rock right here. I'll actually pull that out so that you guys can see it. I have a few designs. So I'll hold it up so that you can see it here. So you can get really creative. Here is actually another rock design. And this one is really, really, really cute. I'll pull these back out again later so you guys can see them. But yeah, this one is really, really cool. So yeah, your canvas does not actually have to be a canvas. You can get creative and paint on other things. You can even do a, um, a plant pot. I'll pull that out in just a second here. We also have some pumpkins. Fall is coming up. I think it would be really, really cool to design some of your pumpkins with the folk art dot paint. All right, let's flip this around. Let's actually come over here to this one. All right, let's squeeze some of this out for a second. All right. We are actually moving through this pretty quickly. The more detail your design, of course, the more time it probably will take. But like I said, this is one of those projects where you can kind of turn on the show and you won't even notice how long it takes you. Um, let's see. So let's go ahead while we have this purple color, let's fill in the dots that are right above this white line. So we'll come here with it. And we have a question from Peggy. Um, does the paint dry fast? I would say give it like three or four hours just to be safe. But mm -hmm. my rule um, is just to let it dry overnight and that way you're totally sure. Yeah. I 100% agree with that. Overnight is always a great idea. Just to be extra, extra safe. So while I'm working on this, if anyone has another color suggestion or request as we work our way towards the middle, let me know. And if you need me to call those paint names back out, I definitely can. I believe we have Mesa Sunrise, which is the orange color that you can see here. We have Pink Nectar. We also have Brilliant Blue which is this brighter blue towards the outside and the silky peacock is more of like a teal, which you kind of see right here. Then we have our white color, which is whisper white. And then the lavender color is hushed violet. So 
I definitely think after this, we should move back into our brighter colors. Okay. So let's set our pleasant purple off to the side here. I am going to grab our hushed violet back out. And then, oh, we said the same thing, <laughs> hushed violet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. And then I think I'm going to go back in with white just to kind of make everything pop. I think that white will definitely do that. All right, so let's fill in the inner rings. Oh, that was a little bit too much. So let's squeeze some out here. We will try to clean that up just a little bit here. So that is what can happen if you do not squeeze onto a paper towel first. So this is a great example of how not to apply too much pressure to your bottle. So we'll clean that up and we'll go back over it in just a second. And like I said, when you do make mistakes like this, if you have some Q-tips around, or even if you have kind of like a paintbrush, a smaller paintbrush, like what I'm using here, you can definitely use that. And then you can even use toothpicks as well to kind of move paint around and to, to manipulate it. So let's just give that one a second to dry here. We'll go back and touch that up. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the other ones. So again, we'll squeeze a little bit of paint out first. There we go. And then we'll go back in with it. All right. So I am swirling the paint around, barely squeezing it out. Whatever comes out in the middle of our bubble, that is what I'm using to fill the rest of it with. So yeah, we... Um probably won't have time to finish the whole mandala, but I think you guys get the idea of what uh, this product is and how to use it. And if there are any last minute questions, uh, go ahead and ask them in the chat and then Bianca and I can try to answer them. Yeah, and then I will pull out our finished product here so that you guys can see it. Um, the chalk was on the supply list to uh, help you uh, with the transfer paper. Um, I think we use pencil because sometimes it's interchangeable, but if you're using a black canvas, we usually will put chalk on the supply list uh, because it will show up better. Um, when you're in person, it's easy to see it if it is um, on, uh, if you use pencil, but it just shows up easier on camera and it can, it's also just makes it super obvious. Um, where your uh, project, or I'm sorry, where your design goes. So as we wrap this up, I will show you guys some of our other project examples before we get out of here. And I showed you guys the rock. Yeah. So I also wanted to show you guys our pot here, which is really, really cute. This is a really pretty design and this is a terracotta pot. And then we also have the pumpkins that I mentioned earlier. So you guys can get really creative and design your fall pumpkins or your Halloween pumpkins with some really nice dot designs. And then we have one more right here that I wanted to show you guys. This one is really, really cool. This is really nice. So this one uses our dots, uh, but then we also have gone in with folk art acrylic paint and uh, added at the bottom, you can see where it's completely filled in. That's with our white folk art acrylic paint. And so we had a question about storing the bottles. Uh, yeah, I would suggest just storing them upright in a cool place. Uh, and we had a question about finding patterns. We have tons of pattern inspiration and other projects using folk art dots on uh, platonline.com. And that is a great resource for uh, finding patterns and inspiration. 
Well, thank you to everyone who joined us today. I'll show you our finished product one more time. So when you do finish your canvas, it should look something like this. And that is it, you guys. We hope that you enjoyed this class. We hope that you do get a chance to go and pick up all of these beautiful paint colors so that you can try your own project at home. Make sure you find us online and share everything that you create with us. Yep, and that's, guys. Plaid, that's plaidonline.com. We had a question one more time about where that website is, plaidonline.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.